Now before we configure our tunnels, we need to make sure that the tunnel endpoints have connectivity to each other. So router two should be able to ping router four and vice versa. In this example, I'm gonna set up the tunnel from the serial interfaces. So logically, it looks like we have this separate tunnel interface, but the tunnel is actually configured from serial 020 to serial 020. So in router two, can we ping 4.1.2.2? Yes, we can. And on router four, can we ping 4.1.1.1? Yes, we can. Now, ping uses a different protocol to GRE. So you need to confirm that you have connectivity using GRE from this interface to this interface. But for the moment, we've used ping as our initial test to ensure that we have basic connectivity. So to configure a tunnel, you go conf t, interface, tunnel, and you specify a number. I'm gonna choose zero to keep it simple, but as you see, there's a wide range of tunnel numbers that you can choose from. Tunnel zero in this example has gone down. The tunnel interface will only come up if we have IP connectivity to the tunnel destination, which we still need to configure. But first, let's configure an IP address on the tunnel. And I'm gonna configure this as a slash 30 network. And once again, we're going to use a private IP address. So we're gonna be sending traffic across the internet using private IP addresses, but it'll work because router three is gonna route traffic based on the outer header, or as described in the RFC, is the delivery header. So the GRE header and payload packet is not gonna be read by the internet routers. They are simply gonna route traffic based on the delivery header. We need to specify the tunnel mode. Notice multiple options are available but we're gonna use GRE and IP version four. That is actually the default, so when we look at the tunnel interface, you'll notice that command doesn't display because that is once again the default tunnel mode. We now need to specify the tunnel source. Notice the tunnel command gives you multiple options. We've already chosen mode, but now we'll select the source of the tunnel you can choose a physical interface or an IP address. In this example, I'm simply gonna choose IP address and hit enter. The tunnel is gonna originate from this IP address and it's gonna to go to a destination of 4.1.2.2, in other words, router four. As you can see, the tunnel has now come up and that's because we have IP connectivity from this router to the destination of the tunnel. The tunnel, however, is not gonna work because we have to configure the other side. So conf t, interface tunnel zero on router four, IP address 10.1.3.2, keep it in the same subnet. So this side is once again 10.1.3.1, and this side is 10.1. 3.2. So back on router four, tunnel mode, GRE, IP, you don't have to specify that command because it's the default, but I'll do it here for completeness. Tunnel source is 4.1.2.2, tunnel destination is 4.1.1.1, and hopefully what we should see is that that tunnel comes up, and there it does show IP interface brief shows us that we now have a tunnel interface that's up up on this side and on router two, the tunnel is up on router two. So on router two, we should be able to ping router four's tunnel interface, which we can. So notice we're pinging 10.1.3.2, but router three has no visibility of that route. And that shows quite nicely that router three is able to route traffic from this IP address to this IP address without actually reading those IP addresses. It's simply routing traffic based on the source to this destination. So let's prove that. I'll start a capture here. I'm gonna start a capture using 
HDLC because the default encapsulation is HDLC on Cisco serial links on interface serial 2 slash 1 on router 3. So at the moment we see CDP, we see some other messages, but what I'll do is do a ping from router two to router four again. And there you go, there's our ICMP messages. So we can see it's an ICMP from 10.1.3.1 to 10.1.3.2. The layer two encapsulation is HDLC. The protocol used at layer three is IP version four. And notice the source and destination IP addresses. 4.1.1.1, destination is 4.1.2.2. In other words, this router is sending traffic to this router. Router three is gonna route based on these IP addresses, not on the IP addresses contained in the encapsulated packet. At layer four, we can see GRE, so generic writing encapsulation using IP version four. And inside there, we can see the source 10.1.3.1 and destination of 10.1.3.2. In other words, we've encapsulated an IP version four packet within an IP version four packet. The original traffic was a ICMP ping so there's the ping, and if we go to the next packet, we can see the ping reply encapsulated in IP version four within GRE, within IP version four, within HDLC. So we've now successfully configured a tunnel from router two to router four. I'll stop that capture. In the next video, we'll check whether router one can ping router five and do some more Wireshark captures and do some other tests.